basketball, with no fewer than 17 senior games wiped out by the blizzard which hit Scotland yesterday, the odds on us having a match at all seemed very long indeed, particularly as this was a scene at Tynecastle Park, where at lunchtime our cameras were in position to cover the game there between Hearts and Aberdeen, and you can see why the match was postponed. Well, this meant that our outside broadcast crew did a very quick dereg and bravely headed across country to Rugby Park, which looked like beating the weather. Such a major effort was well rewarded, as Jock Brown describes now a high-scoring and entertaining match. Kilmarnock we'll kick off on remarkably good playing conditions. You can see the crowd that amassed on the near side of the field there from that long shot because the far side terracing has been blocked off to spectators. There's been some storm damage on the covered terracing roof, so all the crowd is on the near side of the field. So the pitch is remarkably good. It has stood up splendidly to the dreadful weather we've had, and there'll be no excuses at all for the calibre of play we see this afternoon. Kilmarnock on familiar lines, they have a good mixture of experience and youth. They've got experience in the form of their defenders, McLean and Robertson, McDickin and Clark, with young Sam McGivern and Ian Bryson up front, the youngsters. Although they may well depend on a key man in defence, that'll be the goalkeeper Alan McCulloch, whose international prospects were severely hampered a couple of years ago by a bad leg break. John Martin is the Airdrie goalkeeper. Airdrie going for their third straight win under new manager Ali McLeod. And they recently laid out £32,500 to buy Jamie Fairley. There he is from Hamilton Aggies. So the interception there from Jimmy Simpson. Forward pass wasn't very accurate. That's George Anderson at the back. The referee is Mr. David Galloway from Pitlessie, who had a hazardous trip through from Fife. Supported by Nori Anderson at the back. McGuire again coming deep to take possession and run it. They come out at the fence. Good running by Fairley. Great play by Jimmy Fairley. That was beautifully contrived by Airdrie. He won the corner kick, but it could so easily have been better than that. Willie Maguire set it up, coming inside. The pass, opening it up for Jamie Fairley, eluding the goalkeeper, but the cover was there for Kilmarnock. So Tommy Yule with the corner. And out was from Paul Clark. There's McEwen. Caught in two minds, I think. And bringing down Bryson, that's a Kilmarnock free kick. And referee Galloway may well be unhappy with that foul in a long-range one with the Adrian fullback Brian McEwen. That free kick will have to be retaken. Delica returns it. Here's Bryson. He's away from McEwen. The cover coming in from Anderson. Here's a chance now for Bryson. The header. And that was a great chance for Brian Gallagher. And this time it's in. The goal nodded home by Derek McDickin. And that goal was certainly coming. 15 and a half minutes into the first half. Dickin makes it his ninth goal of the season for Kilmarnock. A bit of luck here perhaps for Bryson. Anderson misjudged that ball coming across. A good cross. Gallagher perhaps should have scored at the first attempt. But when the ball was returned across the face of the goal, the tall figure of Derek McDickin powered it home. So with Ian Bryson. And again appeared to be caught in two minds. Yule's pass forward wasn't accurate enough. That's a Kilmarnock throw. Number four is Derek McDickin. Scorer of the only goal of the match so far. It's Gallica. Alistair McLeod. McLeod again. Oh, that wasn't far away. Alistair McLeod. Showing the resemblance to his brother Mordo for... Celtic and showing also similarity in his shooting power. He hit that with lots of venom. 
Jones header. Slight play by Paul Clark initially, but it's retrieved by Stuart McLean for Kilmarnock. Robert Clark bring it towards Bryson. Breaking the ball for Simpson from George Anderson. A great chance for Kilmarnock. And excellent goalkeeping from John Martin. Well, Jimmy Simpson, I think, will be hitting himself there. Got a break of the ball as George Anderson tried to clear. The ball was blocked by Simpson. And this was an excellent chance, but Martin's positioning was superb. on the ball and Paul Clark swooping with that leading uh, tackle is Alan Robertson and uh, Brian Gallagher and Sim Simpson Paul Clark using Stuart McLean at the back Rogers interception Yule playing it forward, that's asking a great deal of the, uh, the fullback, Jim Roger. He certainly continued the forward run, but he had no prospect of reaching that. They headed on from Brian Gallagher catching Sam McGiven offside. Former Youth International, Sam McGiven, now 20 years old. Wally Maguire. Airdrie's throw on the far side and chance of Wally Maguire again to use his intricate skills attacking the Kilmarnock defence. Douglas Laurie's shot was half blocked there by Derek McDickin and that's a corner kick to Airdrie. The youngster hasn't opened his account for Airdrie. It's short first team career. Tommy Yule's corner kick. But they just leap and a great header by Jim Roger brings the entry back on level terms. So 34 minutes gone, just look at this for a leap. Tommy Yule's corner kick. Jim Roger running to the corner of the box, leaping high above everyone else, and the header leaving Alan McCulloch helpless. So Roger's throw brings to an end. Very evenly balanced first half. Ali McLeod, the new area manager, looking pensive as he departs. But it looks pretty fair, that half-time result. The first goal coming in 15 and a half minutes. It was built up on the left when Bryson got away from Laurie Anderson, played across for Brian Gallagher, who might have headed home in the first instance. When the wall returned across the face of the goal, Derek McDickin headed home. The equaliser came in 34 minutes. And you'll seldom see a better leap to head a goal from a corner kick than we saw there from Jim Roger beating Alan McCulloch. So the half-time score, Kilmarnock at one, Airdrie one. So Airdrie start the second half and they've been forced to make a change at half-time. Jamie Fairley, who took a knock early on, has not come out and the sub is young John Stephen, just 18 years old. Breaking from Stuart Miller and picked up by Robert Clark at the back for Kilmarnock. He likes to come forward and link up in midfield. Here's Miller running into McDickin. McLean playing it wide for his fullback colleague, Alan Robertson. Not much doubt about that. The tackle by Brian McEwen penalised. So we'll see this again. It was Sam McGivern who was in the end of that one from Brian McEwen. Ryan! 
Clear across by Gallagher, there's Simpson. The header down and brave goalkeeping by Martin. Some very courageous work by the Airdrie goalkeeper. Saving that situation for Airdrie. The ball coming across, Simpson got a good header on there. Was Bryson racing through and Martin going down at his feet. McGivern playing it into Paul Clark. Great chance for Kamarnock. And that's a corner kick. It was a deflection, but Paul Clark's intrusion into that Kilmarnock attack almost paying off. Played forward by McGivern. There was Paul Clark. He wasn't picked up, driving at the end of defence, and the shot deflected and skimming over the bar. Derek McTicken waiting in the box, marked by Douglas Laurie. McGivern's corner. And the header was from Paul Clark, but he couldn't get the accuracy he wanted. Clark lofting it forward on the left for Kilmarnock. Difficult ball to work with. There's some slackness again among the early players. Here's McDicken going down, a penalty kick has been given. And a golden opportunity now for Kilmarnock. Very positive running by McDicken, this. Some slackness on the far side there by Airdrie. The ball was played inside for McDicken, powering his way through, and he's brought down on the act, and that looks to be a clear penalty kick. Well, now, normally I think we could expect Robert Clark to take the kick for Kilmarnock. Already showing his ability from penalties this season. against Martin. Well, no answer to that kind of shooting. Robert Clark takes the congratulations of his colleagues having put Kilmarnock 2-1 up 22 minutes into the second half. The old-fashioned style thundering the ball past the diving goalkeeper. Here's Simpson. side, Brian Gallagher coming inside Norrie Anderson lighting the ball across to Walt McGiven, first time effort brilliantly saved by Martin, Derek McDicken holding his head well that was a tremendous piece of play Brian Gallagher doing good work on the left for Kilmarnock, chip across the face of the goal, headed out taken first time by McDicken and that's great goalkeeping from Martin Robertson playing it back. Paul Clark. Here's Chuck Miller. Neat ball into space. And Laurie couldn't make anything of it. And it's Simpson on the break. Supported by McLeod. Not a bad effort from Alistair McLeod. John Martin had advanced to not any angle. Simpson powering out of midfield, supported on his right by McLeod. Good shooting chance, you see Martin coming onto the six-yard line, and the shot always well over the top. So pushing by Laurie on McDicken. So a on a free kick. Clark anxious to get on with it, but waiting for some movement ahead. There's Ian Bryson signalling for it. Clumsy challenge in the back by George Anderson. Here's another chance for Kilmarnock. So, uh, near the wall being lined up and organised by goalkeeper John Martin. Five in the wall. McLeod or Clark to take it. Clark's left foot, it's there, and that's a marvellous free kick. Come on, I go 3 1 up, and Robert Clark once again shows his expertise from a set piece. Bending the ball with the left foot right into the corner. Martin was well across, but he couldn't reach it. 
Yes, sir, McGiven. Well struck shot. Just wide of the right hand post. Anderson's pass into space, finding no takers among the early players. So Robert Clark can take the throw and leaving it in fact to Alistair McLeod. A bit of urgency going out of the Kilmarnock play, naturally enough, as they have this 3 1 lead. Well, Jim Roger had already been penalised before the second offence, and that's the one which will earn him a booking. Well, some recklessness here in the part of Roger. Already penalised for that foul, McGiven, and carried on with a second right in front of the referee's eyes. And a red card is shown to Jim Roger. There's the fullback ordered off. That very reckless challenge on McGibbon. The whistle had already gone before he committed the foul, and that's why he's making the lonely walk to the tunnel. And Airdrie are reduced to ten men. Stuart McLean playing the ball forward. Miller thumps it clear. Well, that just about caps Airdrie's day now. Look to be a well-beaten side, and now they've lost a key player in defence. That might not be so important this afternoon now, because this match looks to be beyond them, but the inevitable suspension is one which I'm sure will not please the early manager, Ali McLeod. So it's a Kilmarnock corner kick. Taken by McGiven. Martin, well, they're slapping at the ball in his goal line under intense pressure, right enough. Another corner kick. This time it'll be taken by Ian Bryson. Taken in the thick of the action in the box. The con from Gallagher. Well, that was one which Derek McDicken hoped to save her. Complete miscue, but McGiven returns it. Carpetson trying to turn in the box. Fine save from Martin. The ball thumped clear by Norrie Anderson. That was very promising play by young Scott Carpetson. Looked very sharp in that situation. Here's Willie Maguire, linking with... Ewell attempting to, it's Kilmarnock again, mopping it up, and Alistair McLeod looking for Gallagher. Pushed in the back by Anderson, Kilmarnock free kick. Gallagher and McLeod working it on the right flank. Here's Stuart, that's uh, Paul Clark rather, from the back again. Some slackness again, and that's the fourth. The diving header from McDicken. Well, we're more than a minute into injury time as Derek McDicken heads his second goal of the match and caps a fine second half display by Kilmarnock. Played in by Gallagher on the far side. It's like this now from Norrie Anderson, allowing Bryson to rob him, play the ball across, and the diving header from McDicken going through the hands of John Martin. And 4-1 was how it finished. Thanks, by the way, go from us at Scott Sport to Jim Clooney, Walter McRae and everyone at Rugby Park for accommodating us at such short notice.